Hey, hello, Sushigoons. My name is Alex, and today I wanted to pay some respects to a show that I practically grew up with. Ben 10 was a show from 2005 centered around a boy aptly named Ben who found an alien device that lets him transform into 10 different aliens. The original series ended after four seasons in almost three years, but was continued through three other series Alien Force, Ultimate Alien, and the one that almost broke the internet, Omniverse. The latter of which would make for a video in and of itself, but that's not what we're going to talk about today. After four series of continuous continuity, Cartoon Network would reboot the franchise in 2016. Outside of toy sales, the results were... Yikes! They weren't very good. Personally, I'm not a fan of the reboot for a variety of reasons. The stronger emphasis on jokes than action or story, the art style looks like a cookie cutter cartoon that networks shovel out like clockwork, 11 minute sister episodes instead of a 22 minute story, and the characters weren't even in the same ballpark as the originals. This got me telling myself, God, I could come up with something better than that. And you know what? I want to share some ideas for this with you. In this video, I'll be rebuilding and redesigning aliens from my Ben 10 reboot playlist. But a few general rules of thumb before we move on. Number one. I wanted to keep the art style closer to my own. This way I'm not restricted too much by guidelines and make them stand out from the originals. The official reboot went with an art style that's a bit too simplistic and safer for a younger audience. Western media really needs to break away from this, I swear to god the year 2000s had this down to a T. Number 2. I wanted to alter the base roster due to creative preferences. What I mean is I gave Ben aliens that are present in future series. If the reboot can give Ben season 2 transformations from the get-go and UAF transformations in the same series, then I can do the same. You don't have to agree with the ideas, all I ask is you keep it civil in the comments. Please subscribe. And number 3? Ever heard of multiverse theory? Or have been a part of the Undertale fandom? The idea is that there is an infinite number of universes, and each universe is different in some way, shape, or form. Sometimes these differences are very minor, like a person's eye color is different. And other times it's pretty drastic, like if Germany won World War II, or if the dinosaurs n never went extinct as an example. Omniverse had Ben's character and roster change with each version of him. For example, Mad Ben was evil and had an Australian accent, and No Watch Ben, where the Omnitrix never even existed. For this reboot, some alien species are replaced with different ones for series representation. The multiverse theory is just here to justify these actions. Just keep that in the back of your mind while watching this. With that said, it's hero time! Let's kick the roster off with an obvious fan favorite and the first transformation Ben ever turned into, Heat Blast. So Heat Blast was a bit of a challenging design to do. One of the design aspects I liked in the classic series was the black and white uniforms most of the transformations had. Forearms, diamond head, etc. And I wanted every alien to have this. Heat Blast was a bit tricky to incorporate due to the lava plating. Don't get me wrong, it's an amazing classic design for a reason, but how do I incorporate a uniform with this guy? Originally, I remembered this design by Kuro the Artist. If you're a fan of Kuro or his work, then you know this design. The assless chaps! I originally decided to shrink down the stockings to where the plates started to fade away, but it looked very... off. I was about to forego the idea until I literally googled redesigns for Heat Blast. I saw they were mostly leggings and pants, and I wasn't really feeling that. That is, until I found this design by... Oh god, I'm gonna butcher this name. Uh, Ficklancy? I don't really know how you pronounce it, but I will leave a link to their DeviantArt down below. Trust me, they make some good stuff. Their Heat Blast may be more in line with the future Ben, but the idea was there. A chest piece. My idea was to use the design for the future plumbers in Omniverse, but I eventually went with a shoulder collar design that had the top being white and the bottom was as close to black as I could make it, without, you know, actually making it black. Now, for powers, 
Heat Blast is a Pyromancer, meaning that he can create and control fire. He can shoot fireballs from his hands, spew out flamethrowers from his hands, and breathe fire, can resist heat and fire-based attacks, can absorb fire, melt or burn almost anything he touches, and has pyrokinetic flight. A trick Ben learned while using Heat Blast so much. Basically, he can use flames like a surfboard and propel himself through the air. With great powers, though, comes great weaknesses. As you'd expect, Heat Blast is basically worthless in a wet environment. If he's too wet, he can bring his flames back, but for a limited time. Certain species slash materials are resistant to his heat and flames as well, making him a regular person going up against Mike Tyson in his prime. I wouldn't mention a dizzy spell when he flies in circles, but that seems kind of redundant. It's like a thing that everyone should have. That being said, I present to you my design for a rebooted Heat Blast. Next on the docket is Ben's OG strength transformation, Forearms. At least until Humongosaur took over that department. Originally, I tried to make him sleeveless and still keep the symbol on his shoulder, but then I realized there must be a muscle infusion thing going on, and I really didn't want to think about it, so I opted out of that. But then I remembered that Omniverse often had transformations wearing clothes that resemble the actual species, so I took some inspiration from the UAF design and other members of Forum species. What I did was mix the gloves of the classic series with UAF's Golden Bracers. As for the lower body, I used the design in the Generator Rex crossover where he had black tights mixed with the shin guards. Now, I did have to change where the Omnitrix symbol would go, much to my dismay. It's on his belt now. In terms of the shirt, I tried to make it resemble the classic series, but I added more black to help make it pop out a bit. Another element I chose to add was golden shoulder pads, which from what I've noticed is a common occurrence. I also chose to give most aliens their unique eye color. It's a detail I really like from the classic series, and then Alien Force onward made each one have green eyes. Now, green eyes for most transformations do work, like Blitzwolf, Snarrow, Frankenstrike, and Accelerate. But when everyone has it, it's kind of repetitive. As for abilities, he's got super strength, durability, leaping tall buildings in a single bound, fire and heat resistance, wrestling abilities, acrobatics, and thunderclaps. He's pretty much a generic strength alien, that's why his powers aren't really anything special. Though a fun fact about his species though, the women are physically stronger than the guys. Take that for what you will. In terms of weakness, his size makes maneuverability a hassle. Due to his size, Forums is more often than not slower than his opponent and is a larger target. He's also vulnerable to electricity and other energy attacks. With that said, I present to you my design for a rebooted Forearms. Now for one of my personal favorites, Diamond Head. Just getting this out of the way, the classic design was alright, but I do prefer the classic series Ben 10,000 design. So I knew I wanted to pay respects to that design. Although I will say, visually speaking, the official reboot design for Diamond Head was pretty good. Possibly the most faithful design that series had to offer. But when it comes to powers, they added one thing that drives me up a wall. They straight up made him Iceman. Come on, people, that's precious mineral, not moisture in the air. Hey, Future Alex here, and while working on the video, I realized that Omniverse had something like this, too. My god, what is it with people making Diamond Head Iceman? Regardless of that idiotic ability, I did come to a problem with the crystal color. See, the original series had a nice teal leaning more into the greens, but the crystal was leaning more into the blues when he returned for UAF. In the end, I took both colors and mixed them the best I could. Please do not judge me for this one. I will say that getting the geometric shapes to align with the anatomy was a massive pain. I do not envy those who had to animate Diamond Head. My design may seem a little weird with the arm at a weird angle, but I wanted to work on poses for this project, and the one I went with fit him to a T. 
in terms of abilities, Diamond Head can manipulate parts of his body into bladed weapons and can shoot shards of crystal from his arms like they're machine guns. He can also manifest crystals from the ground. Due to his crystalline body, Diamond Head can absorb or reflect most energy-based attacks and is also heat and fire resistant. Also, because crystals are one of the hardest materials on the planet, he can take quite a lot of punishment. But there is a limit to how much he can take before the crystals start to shatter, specifically against ultra vibration attacks. For example, a Lobo and Sonic Howl. That said, here's my design for a rebooted Diamond Head. Now, every team needs some brain power, and in this case, what better than the species that created the watch itself? Yep, I'm giving Ben Grey Matter. As his name would suggest, Grey Matter is more of a tactical alien instead of a powerhouse. However, his intelligence and techno capabilities are the equivalent of a supercomputer. And in case you were not in the know, Grey Matter's species is not only a play on the stereotypical Grey aliens, but they're also meant to be based on frogs which explains the bulbous eyes, gills on the side of his head, and the large hands and feet. In terms of the design, I pretty much combined Omniverse and Classic series. Basically, Omniverse cut the line at the waist and added a collar with some gloves. But I really like the Classic series design more. In terms of the pose, I knew exactly what I wanted, but getting there was a bit of a struggle. I kept starting over with just about everything until I got something that was a little unorthodox, but it worked. Additional changes I made are his skin, which is now a very light gray, and the green in his eyes are a lot lighter, like a lime green or something, to make those bulbs pop. I will admit he's possibly the closest to the original series, but out of every design for gray matter, I do think the classic was the best one. As for weaknesses, he's not suited for physical combat due to his size. He's also prone to make mistakes like everyone else is, and because it's still Ben, he doesn't know everything. But in terms of what he can actually do, Green Matter's most notable power is his intelligence, being able to understand any technology just by looking at it. He can also make advanced pieces of technology with spare parts. Grey Matter also has sharp teeth and can scale walls like a frog, with enhanced reflexes of course. That said, here's my design for a rebooted Grey Matter. Next up we have an iconic alien that the official reboot got completely wrong. Stinkfly. Stinkfly in the official reboot was more humanoid than insect, which I gotta be honest, aside from the colors, I'm not a fan of this guy. So of course, I'm taking him back to being more of an insect. However, I did want to add a few things. First was an element from the Ben 10,000 version, where he had a pair of four legs that were pretty large. I also added a bit more insect features to help distinguish my interpretation from the official design. For this, I initially turned to Waspinator from Transformers Animated, but I ended up using a maw similar to Ball Weevil and added a claw on the sides of his face. The idea was this helped in picking up food. Also, I realized that he's also closer to the original design, but I'd rather take this over the guy cosplaying as an insect. As for what he can do, well, that's a bit confusing. See. In the original series, he's got 360 vision due to his eye stalks, flight enhanced biology, a strong stench, and can produce gas and slime. The slime can come from either his eye stalks or his mouth, but it seems random as to how his slime reacts to certain conditions. So what I'm doing is that I'm streamlining this ability. In the show, the slime essentially acted like a fire extinguisher or a flammable explosive. Now, if Ben wants to shoot the fire suppressant, it comes from his eye stocks, and the explosive slime is shot from the mouth. And regarding the gases, I think it's best if he produces a herbicidal gas because methane seems like it could backfire on him, and toxic is pretty self-explanatory if you want to be a hero. Also, since his wings are so thin, if they get wet, he can't fly away until they're dried off. 
And with that said, here's my take on a rebooted Stinkfly. Feel free to roast my art in the comments down below. Before we move on to the official alterations, there's one more alien I wanted to tackle. The Glob of Living Metal Upgrade. Fun fact, Upgrade is made of a colony of nanites, which is why his body is so malleable. And because of his flexibility, I basically had free range with the design. Unfortunately, I couldn't figure out a way to incorporate the full body, but just know I wanted to use the reboot's head and legs, while the rest is a classic series, color scheme, techno pattern, arm proportions, etc. A happy medium, if you ask me. One little detail I did want to add and elaborate on was Upgrade's voice. In the original series, Upgrade talked with Ben's voice as if it was a recording. The reason for this is that galvanic mechamorphs, species, can't enhance living beings, and the Omnitrix can't merge organic and inorganic DNA, which makes Upgrade an incomplete transformation. In terms of powers, he can encase any form of advanced technology and enhance it with new features. But this is only limited to machines and technology, no living tissue. He's also got a cool laser that he can shoot through his eye, but yeah, it's kind of out of left field. But then again, lasers have always been awesome, so... Moot point? In terms of weaknesses, he's practically useless anywhere there isn't technology like the forest, for example. And since he's made of living metal, he's highly subject to electrical attacks, and magnets can immobilize him to some extent. If he does encounter a sapient machine, for example, Slick's Vigma from the classic series, then his merging with technology can be fought off. Additionally, Upgrade cannot morph his body into other technology due to the Omnitrix failing to merge Ben and Upgrade's DNA, unlike pure versions of his species. That said, I present to you my design for a rebooted upgrade. With the returning transformations out of the way, it's time for some new blood. However, it did take me a while to figure something out about the pose for this one. So, for some new season representation, I decided to alter a few things. So, Walma is a pretty cool alien, and playing on the multiverse theory, I chose to replace Volpamancers with a new species that pretty much takes the same role. Again, multiverse theory. This alien is called Wildcat. He's a Pantherian, a race that shares ape and feline characteristics from the planet Moitheria. Conceptually, I designed him off of snow leopards and smilodons. Smilodons are mistakenly referred to as saber-toothed tigers, even though they're not related to modern tigers, but they're basically cats with tusk teeth. And I chose snow leopards mostly because they're my favorite big cat, and the media likes using that species. Plus, lots of people like cats anyway, so why not? Anyways, Pantherians have super hearing and smell, prehensile feet for gripping, sharp teeth, obviously, and claws, but they have a prehensile tail that acts as a fifth limb. Another change from the Volpamancers is that they actually have eyes. My mindset was, if this was being animated, I think the viewer should be able to tell what he's thinking. Just an animation and a character design tip, the eyes can tell a million words. Also, Moitheria is a jungle planet with a regular day and night cycle, and most animals have working optic sensors. Pantherians suffer from a genetic mutation that causes them to be blind. I also added a black chest plate to connect with the shoulder piece, because I thought it was cool. As for weaknesses, it's pretty much the same as Daredevil to be honest. Due to his lack of sight and natural feline senses being enhanced further, Wildcat can be incapacitated by strong smells and sounds at specific frequencies. With that said, I present to you the new alien, Wildcat. We're taking a dip in the drink for the crustaceous bottom feeder, Water Hazard. Water Hazard was my favorite alien out of the Andromeda 5 from Ultimate Alien. 
I like to think that Overflow used Water Hazard as a basis given how similar they look and pretty much had the same powers. I just love Water Hazard's design more. The reason I gave Ben this alien aside from personal preference is to give him a water alien that isn't completely helpless outside of water. Looking at you, you piece of dried out fish and chips. To avoid making it seem like Ben has an OP playlist off the bat, I'm having the drawback to using Water Hazard be he's slow and tanky. Which makes sense given his top heavy frame. In terms of powers, he can breathe underwater like most aquatic aliens. He has hydrokinesis to make water whips or jets of water from his hands. And enhanced biology. But as a weakness, he is vulnerable to high amounts of heat. And when hit with enough force, he can fire projectiles uncontrollably. Side note, electricity hurts him. Like a lot. In terms of design, I wanted to combine the Omniverse and UAF design. What I did was use the upper body of the Omniverse design, except for the face, and combine it with UAF's lower body and face. What I did not do was incorporate the barnacles from Omniverse. I get what they were meant to do, but they look kinda ugly in my opinion. Posing this guy was also a, a big problem. It was mainly because I wanted an action pose, but the images I found were not very clear, and he has massive arms anyway. Still though, I think I managed to get something that works. That said, here's my design for a rebooted water hazard. Now, let me bring your attention to a forgotten transformation. The quick-footed feline flash knockoff, Fast Track. In case it wasn't obvious, Fast Track is meant to replace Accelerate, due to them being speed transformations. In the original continuity, Flash Track species is implied to be slower than Accelerate's. I wanted to add this one because this guy never got the attention he needed, so I'm trying to do him justice. I mean, come on, even his debut series didn't use him all that much. And really, if you think about it, Fast Track may be a better pick than Accelerate, because Accelerate has a tail which a smart enough opponent can take advantage of. A little food for thought, that. <laughs> As for the design, I gave him a one-piece suit that somewhat resembled a track suit. I also gave him a retractable visor that protects his eyes when he runs. Think of it like Accelerate's visor when he flips it down before he runs. It's, it's basically that, but from the sides. Fast Track's abilities include Super Speed, which is pretty obvious, Enhanced Biology, like Stamina, Strength, Durability, you get the idea. Now, Fast Track in this series is so fast that he can run on water and create tornadoes. Much like Accelerate, but I believe he's faster because, you know, he works for that stuff. He can even move so fast that he can dodge laser fire. In terms of weaknesses, however, he does have problems stopping when he moves too fast, and a smart enough opponent can take advantage of his speed, much like Accelerate. For example, slippery surfaces kill any traction he would get by running. Also, compared to Ben's other transformations, Fast Track is more of a glass cannon. So, if one good hit gets him, he's boned. Like, like, he could barely stand up after it. With all this in mind, I present to you my take on a rebooted Fast Track. Wrapping up the playlist is an alien that got many fans divided. The mind-controlling OP vamp, Wampire. Now, Wampire is a series problem transformation. What I mean is, each series had a transformation that gave Ben problems in some way, shape, or form every time he used it. In the classic series, it was Ghost Freak taking control of Ben's mind and eventually leading the Omnitrix. In UAF, it was Big Chill due to his species' reproductive cycle, as well as Amphibian due to the host trying to hide his tracks. And Omniverse was Swampfire due to being a late bloomer. To properly explain why Wampire is like this, I need to go over the changes I'm making. For Wampire, I wanted to nerf his species in some aspects. He still has his enhanced biology such as super strength, speed, stamina, the works. But I also chose to get rid of his Corruptor ability. 
Essentially, it's a small organism that he can spit up to mind control enemies like a puppet. Now, he already has a hypnosis ability, so it's either one or the other in this case. A cool ability I'm giving him is Shadow Manipulation. How this works is that he can absorb himself into shadows to avoid attacks and pop up at any point. The problem is he needs to be in a shady area to use this. I also took out some of his other abilities like his quadrupedalism, his bat form, and sonic explosions in exchange for a cloak similar to Big Chill. This cloak acts as a form of protection from sunlight because he's a vampire. While cloaked, he loses his ability to fly, but if he uncloaks in the sun, he's going to be severely sunburned. As you'd expect, he's no worse for wear at nighttime where he's unrestricted. So, how I'm making him a problematic transformation is that another one of his species, Lord Transel, has a mental link with all others of his kind. Transel, I imagine, found a way to evolve his shadow manipulation, and essentially put parts of himself into every other member of his kind. Because of this, his enemies are forced to contain him in a sun prison. However, he reincarnates into other members of his species. This includes Ben when he transforms into Wampire. This could be a situation as confusing as classic Ghost Freak, but I think it makes more sense than what was implied in Ghost Freaked Out. With that said, I present to you my take on a rebooted Wampire. And that's the rebooted playlist done. Tan aliens down the hatch, and I never showed what Ben would look like in this series. Eh, maybe another time if you really want it. Let me know in the comments. I'm not sure where to go from this, but I do have some ideas for new aliens to boost series representation, and other aliens I think would make for fun matchups. Anyway, Sergeant Dragoons, until next time, reach for the stars.